Creating a new Excel file should be an easy task, right? Well, it turns out that it's not that easy after all. There is no out-of-the-box action to do it. The Excel connector only allows you to work with existing files. But luckily, there's a trick to do just that. See, creating blank files is easy. You can use the SharePoint's create file action for that. But Excel files are not exactly empty, are they? They need the basic structure in order for Excel to pick them up correctly. But hey, files are just files, right? These are just bytes. Yes, right. So what if you created a new blank Excel file as a template, copy the base structure and use it for creating new Excel files? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm on SharePoint right now and I'll create my basic Excel file. So I'll just click on new Excel workbook and this will open up Excel online. And what I want to do is just make sure that it's saved and then I'll just close it and I have my blank Excel file created. And now I can go to Power Automate and get this basic structure out of this Excel file to use it later. So let me go to Power Automate. I've created a blank flow um, just for that. And I'll click on Add a New Action. And I'll search for Get File Content from SharePoint. And I'll just click on Get File Content, that one. And I'll select my site, which will be, looks like it doesn't appear here on the list. So I'll click Add Date, Enter Custom Value. And I'll just go here and copy my site name here. Site address, file identifier, let me search for that, share documents, book.xlsx. And that's basically it. I can go ahead, save that and click on test manually. And here is my basic Excel structure. So body and then I have this content. This is what's currently inside my Excel file. You, you don't have to worry about anything here. What you need to do is just copy everything here, then go to edit, create a new action and create a new compose block. Compose blocks are like variables, but they are constants. So the values won't change. And I'll just create a new variable to hold this basic Excel template. And inside inputs, I'll just paste whatever I received from my get file content. Now I can get rid of this get file content. I can now go back to SharePoint and just delete this book.xlsx. And I can go back to Power Automate and create a new action, which will be create file on SharePoint. Site address will be test site. Folder path will be shared documents. The file name will be my new Excel file dot XLSX. And then the file content will be dynamic content and then basic Excel template outputs. Let's first see if that works. And I'll just rename this create a new Excel file, save and test. Okay, let's see if that worked. So create a new Excel file. And let me now go back to SharePoint and refresh this page. And I can see my new Excel file.xlsx, but let's see if Excel actually knows how to open this. And it looks like it works. So let's go ahead and populate it with some data. So now that I have my Excel file, I want to create a table within this Excel file and I want to store some values. For this demonstration, I'll just use some demo data. I have some employees information. It's actually a JSON array containing a couple of records. Each record contains an employee name, employee salary, employee age, and the ID. And I want to store this in my new Excel file. So what I'll do is I'll just copy everything that I have here, go back to Power Automate and create another Compose block, Demo Employee Data, and as inputs, I'll just paste in whatever I have here. Now, this data is JSON and you might have received something like this from a JSON API. And I'll just go one step further and make this a bit more user friendly within Power Automate. Um, I want to extract each of the fields and make them available within Power Automate. So what I'll do is just click on plus here, add an action and then search for parse JSON. And then the content will be my dynamic content. And then this will be the demo employee data outputs. And then I'll click here, use sample payload to generate schema. And I'll just paste the same JSON in here again. And I'll just click on done. And as you can see, Power Automate uh, created this schema for me. So I don't have to worry about extracting these fields manually. I can just use the outputs from this parsed JSON. And I'll rename this parsed JSON into formatted demo data. 
Now that I have created a new Excel file, and for this demonstration, I will just add an underscore and one, so not to create a duplicate from uh, yeah with, with the previous file. Now that I have this, I'll go ahead, add a new action, and this new action will, will be create a table. Excel Online Business, create table, and now I can select my location again. So this will be SharePoint test site, document library will be documents, and the file will be go to this dynamic content. So create a new Excel file item ID. So body slash item ID. And now with this table range, what I want to do is just specify the, the size of my new table. And this new table will initially just contain the names of the columns. So I'll create one, two, three, four columns. So that'll be from A1 to a, B, C, D, one. Two other things that I can do. Let me just click on show all. And what I can do as well is name this table. So the table name will be employees and the column names will be, let me just check that again. So ID, employee name, employee salary, and age. Employee, salary, and age. Okay, so ID, employee, salary, age will be my columns. And now what I can do is try to save that. Now let's try to add some data into this new Excel table. Let me click on a plus, search for Excel online connector again, add a row into a table, and the location will be test site again, document library will be the documents again, the file, it will be that file identifier again, dynamic content and search for create a new Excel file, it'll be this body slash item ID. I can use the same table name that I chose here in the create table. So and let me just fix the typo here. So table name, let me just copy that, add a new row into a table and the table will be this thing. So employees. And now the row, we need to use the JSON notation to enter the file information in here. I'll enter this curly bracket and inside here I will list all my column names. So the first column name will be ID and then I'll do a colon and make sure to wrap these column names into double quotes. They must be double quotes and then a colon and then a space and then another double quote. Inside here I can use this dynamic value and I will go back to my formatted demo data. This demo employee data is what contains my original data. Only thing that I can get from here is this output. But since I've parsed this JSON data, I can now use each of the keys from this JSON inside Power Automate as well. And I have this body ID, which is my ID column, and I can just click it. So not only does Power Automate know about the columns in my JSON now, but it also created this loop for me. And what this loop does is it'll let Power Automate loop through all the records in my JSON and create all the rows for me in Excel automatically. Isn't that great? So ID, body ID, that seems correct. Make sure to wrap that in double quotes as well. And now I'll do comma at the end, some more spaces. And now I will do employee. Actually, let me check the actual name. So create table. Let me just copy that from here. And I'll just paste that in here. So employee, let me just first add all my columns. Now I can remove that. So I have all four columns and now I can just go ahead and add the dynamic values here. Instead of clicking this, this the lightning bolt, I can also do a slash and click this insert dynamic content or just slash and enter. I can now search for employee and employee name just popped up here. I can do the same for salary. So slash insert dynamic content and I'll search for employee salary and then for the age I'll do slash dynamic content employee age. Let me try to save that and test. Okay it seems like I have an issue here. Let's see if I can fix that and I'll click on create table and see what the issue was. File. Okay so file ID it says it was four so it looks like I need to use the other ID. When I create a new Excel file, I get a couple of outputs, a couple of parameters back. I got this item ID, which is the actual item ID within SharePoint, but it looks like I need to use this ID. And this is something OneDrive Excel connector understand. So it looks like I need to use that ID. So let me go back, edit, create table and remove this item ID and instead do ID, body ID. And now let's do the same for add a row into a table, dynamic content, create a new Excel file ID. Okay, let's try to save that again. 
and test it. Okay, it's running and you can see new rows appearing as I'm speaking in the new Excel file. So it looks like this is working as expected. Okay, it looks like I got 24 employees, not 50, but even that took took some time. It was not instant. It looks like it took 36 seconds for it to complete. So there is one simple fix to make this faster. If you want to, you can go to edit again and click on this for each, go to settings, concurrency control, enable this degree of par parallelism, and you can set it to, I believe you can set it to maximum. Let's try to save that again. So I'll just rename this into my Excel file too. And there you go. It took three seconds to create 24 records. And that's much better, is it? So there you go. That's how to create a new Excel file and add some precious lines in there. I hope that was useful. If you like that video, make sure to leave a like, um, make sure to write down any, any questions down in the comments. And and make sure to subscribe not to miss any new videos. So yeah, until the next time, stay tuned and see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.